Okay, switching gears, we want to talk a little bit about a new toolbar that we've been working with in Ohio called a nutrient boom. And again, it's a, an opportunity, we think, to apply dairy manure at a time when we aren't currently applying manure in the state of Ohio uh, from dairy farms. I just did a, some quick numbers. Uh, we have about 277,000 dairy cows in Ohio. Uh, when you add up um, all the sources of water, and again, I didn't put in rainfall, uh, lot runoff, things like that, we're essentially trying to apply over 2.7 billion gallons of uh, wastewater and manure each year in the state. And most of that starts right after silage, and then it continues until we're done. And uh, because of all the uh, hog farms, too, that need to be uh, have manure applied, our commercial applicators uh, work well into the winter around here, and uh, we know that's something we, we probably need to start uh, trying to get away from. As you look at the analysis of dairy manure, it's much lower than swine manure. And again, it all depends. If, if you were talking about... Uh, a farmer who uses uh, organic bedding and, and has a, uh, a manure storage pond, these numbers would probably be higher, especially the organic nitrogen portion. But if we were talking about uh, someone with sand bedding and this was a second or third pond that manure has been pumped to, that's settled out, these numbers might be even lower. So basically dairy manure is not uh, high in nutrients if we can avoid putting it on wheels and hauling it. Uh, we, we like to. So again, drag lines are very, very common for us to use in Ohio. The nutrient boom, uh, this is what it looks like when it's folded up for transport. It's uh, being developed by uh, a couple folks out of the state of New York, and um, they're trying it out on some Ohio farms, and we have the uh, honor of working with them in western Ohio. Uh, it's just another picture. Again, uh, the fields are pretty flat up here, pretty level. You can barely see the rows of corn, but essentially he's going to drop that off, uh, radio back, have his partner turn on the uh, uh, pumps, and start applying manure. Uh, this is what the cadman looks like when it's been unrolled. You can kind of see that they've built a uh, device uh, here to pick up that nutrient boom when they do pull it across the field. This is just a picture of the small motor that's on a cadman. It's going to turn that reel and pull that back in. This is just a picture of it being pulled across the field. Again, the, uh, the nutrient boom itself, the tool, uh, does, not, uh, does not move itself. It's just simply pulled by the retraction of the cadmium hose. That's just a picture of when it's completely unfolded. The goal is to have a hose every 60 inches, and it covers approximately uh, 48 rows of corn in a path. So in that 1,200-foot-long uh, field, it would be covering about six acres. On the day I was there shooting this video, um, it was uh, essentially taking um, about two hours to cover that, and then they've sped it up quite a bit since, but that's what we were doing at that time. On the right-hand side, you can see the uh, um, little Briggs & Stratton engine. Here is a pump that it is running, and then here's the distributor. And essentially, the manure is coming from the Cadman hose, uh, the reel itself, down through the hose, then up through and being distributed. And that's essentially how that's working uh, in this toolbar. This is what it looks like. Uh, we've got the hoses um, every 60 inches. You can see the uh, rows of corn here. And there's another row right there. And again, our goal is to provide moisture and to move manure at a time of the year when we don't currently do that on, uh, on corn. And this farmer is expecting this summer that he's going to move somewhere between 10 and 15 million gallons of manure on his growing corn, or I should say growing silage, um, again, at a time of the year when everyone else is going to be waiting for uh, wheat to come off or waiting for silage to come off. We picked this hose up, put it in a five-gallon bucket, timed it, uh, timed how long or how fast the boom was moving, and this application rate came out to be right around 10,000 gallons per day, or per acre that day. This is basically what it's looked like after it's had a chance to absorb into the ground. You can see the purple collar of the corn, which is an indication it's, it's ready for some moisture. Here's just an example of where the nutrient boom later in the growing season is just about to be pulled to the end of the field. 
when it does, it's picked up like that, and then they transport it down to the next 48 rows of corn. And so all they do is they just have a small tractor hooked to the um, Cadman hose. And you can see the yellow hose is the charge hose that's providing manure to the Cadman itself. And as they go down through there, I can, ours is pausing just a little bit, but as you go down through there, you can begin to see a haggy that's parked in the field. And that haggy that's parked in the field is, uh, has a connector that they've hooked to it. And that's how they transport this boom back down the field when the corn is uh, too tall for that small tractor that we saw earlier in the video, or earlier in the PowerPoint. Again, they'll basically pull until they're directly behind that haggy. Uh, it will back up, it'll hook on, take that nutrient boom off of the uh, Cadman, and then head down the field with it. So there's just a picture. Um, they set that down. You can see the, the Hagee is backed up to the um, nutrient boom. Uh, they pull forward a little bit. They always make sure they put a log chain around it. Uh, because, again, you're going to be pulling that uh, hose out of that Cadman as you drive across that standing corn. And uh, this is just a video of, uh, of um, dragging that or carrying that nutrient boom uh, the length of the field to get it uh, back to a set position. The hose on this Cadman is 1,200 feet or a little better. Uh, they're also trying to build them with 2,200 feet in mind for some of our half-mile fields that we have around here. And their goal is that this would be one that you turn it on and you forget it, and then you can do other things until you, uh, you know that it's almost across the field and you can come back and, and take charge again. So it's, it's uh, kind of nice from that respect. It uh, might be something that folks are able to use down the road. We think it has a lot of potential in Ohio. We just uh, haven't had much chance to get data off these types of fields. That's one of our goals this summer. This is just what the hose looks like uh, as, as the, after the Hagee is dropped off that uh, nutrient boom. Uh, this video is simply um, a video of the boom going across the field. By the end of the summer, they had sped up the uh, pressure and they had sped up the uh, flow of manure. Early in the summer, they were running four or 500 gallons per minute through there. Uh, here, they were running more than 700 gallons per minute through the uh, hose system. And uh, the speed now is up to a mile and a half per hour, is where it was closer to a half a mile an hour earlier in the uh, summertime. So again, they made improvements as the year unfolded. I um, think there's a lot of potential for it uh, as we continue to go. Probably one of the biggest things is just to try to make sure all the hoses are unplugged as we go. Um, you know, they we're talking about uh, the opportunity of running manure through smaller hoses, and that plug potential is always there. And then as it does go through the field, this is just a picture of, the, uh, of what the hose looks like. You can see this hose is a little bigger than the one we had earlier in the summer, and the flow rate's a little faster than what it was earlier in the summer. And you can see the cracks in the soil. Those aren't large by our standards. Usually our soils are cracked even worse than that. But it's uh, an example of where you've got a liquid uh, that's really, really low in uh, organic material that's being put right on a field that has large cracks in it. So um, we just think it's very, very important when we look at uh, this type of uh, manure application technology that we have to be concerned about that. The good thing is the manure is being applied at ground level. There's very little aerosol occurring. Uh, odor is pretty minimal in this type of a situation. So we think that's a real positive uh, for this. This is what the field looked like after we got across. Um, again, this was uh, after pollination. Uh, we wanted to try to target it toward about the grain fill time of corn would be uh, one of the times we would want to make a pass if we possibly could. I just emphasize again, um, I would never encourage people to look at this type of a technology unless they were taking uh, manure, manure escapes uh, seriously. Uh, and that's why we really emphasize these pile control structures. Uh, we are very level. We have a potential to uh, uh, 
to utilize these types of devices and basically we can we can restrict the flow of moisture through these devices when we're doing manure application and there's there's other great uses for them. you know uh, we have a lot of uh, research in Ohio with there's three positives one you can use them during manure application two we can uh, use them to increase crop yields by restricting uh, water flow and third, uh, we can uh, use them when we restrict that water flow to reduce our P205 that leaves our fields. And that concludes my part.